Howdy doody buckaroonies. This is a Steinway Model D piano, which is an absolutely beautiful instrument and a pretty fascinating piece of mechanical engineering. It weighs just about half a ton and would set you back somewhere north of $150,000 to own one. This is UVI's Key Suite, which is a pretty detailed sample collection of over 90 instruments that comes in at $349 and is packed into only 50 gigabytes of disk space in FLAC format or in uncompressed wave around 200 gigabytes of information. This this is your typical contact piano library from Native Instruments. It costs about $99 and weighs in at only 13 gigabytes of disk space. And that brings us to this, which is Piano Tech 7 from Modart, which does more than any of these things combined could ever dream of doing and does it all in only about 50 megabytes. Physical modeling synthesis is crazy stuff, and I think Pianotech probably represents some of the best of what physical modeling has to offer the world. With over a decade invested in perfecting their algorithms and refining nearly every aspect of their engine, Modart has created what I consider not only some of the best physical modeling examples of what it's capable of, but also a really good representation of what I think is the future of synthesis and virtual instruments. Pianotech has always had me curious, but once I heard about the new features of Pianotech 7, I absolutely had to get my hands on it. So I contacted the people at Modart, and they were kind enough to provide me with a copy of the Pianotech Pro Studio Bundle, which contains all of the available instrument packs for the Pianotech engine, so that I could share it with all of you and show it off here on the channel. Now, I'm really excited to explore Pianotech with you here today, but I'm also planning to do a bigger video in the future all about physical modeling and go into a bit more detail about why it's really cool. But in case you're not familiar with what physical modeling is or why you should be excited about it, let's cover some of the basics. Physical modeling synthesis uses some advanced math and some special techniques like resonant bandpass filters, additive harmonic reconstruction, waveguides, or a combination of these things, as well as some other really hefty, sciencey, mathy stuff that's just way beyond my pay grade in order to accurately represent the characteristics of an object or an instrument. Simulating something like a plucked string isn't really all that hard. By using something like a comb filter or a short delay with a high feedback, you can create a pretty crude playable instrument in only a couple of seconds. Now, while that's pretty straightforward, doing something like a piano is a lot harder. Not only do we have to simulate a string, we've also got to simulate how long that string is and how that would affect the overall tone and characteristics. We have to simulate the hammers, the hardness of the hammers, the pedals and the different way the pedals interact with things, the sympathetic resonance of the strings all vibrating together, and things like the wood of the piano and how the different wood types would impact the tone and overall feel, as well as the microscopic differences between each individual key that give a piano its soul and character. As if this isn't complicated enough, you also have to consider the way that the sound is interacting and propagating in an acoustic environment. And to emulate something like piano tech, we've also got to take into consideration the microphones and their placement, the type of microphones, and how their placement relative to the source is going to affect the tone of those microphones and how we perceive the overall sound. So this is to say it's pretty complicated stuff. Pianotech takes this challenge head on and says, no problem, I got you. And I think it sounds just as good as the real thing. Honestly, if you set me in front of a piano that just played back the sounds of Pianotech, I'm not sure I would be able to tell you the difference apart from maybe the keys vibrating as you play, but there are even virtual pianos that emulate that behavior. So with that in mind, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't know the difference. As if this wasn't cool enough, Pianotech also offers a variety of instruments that you can play back, like different models of pianos, things like a harpsichord, a hand drum, a kalimba, a vibraphone, a marimba, and a whole lot more, which we'll also be exploring here in this video. If you're interested in how Modart does all of this stuff, I've left a couple of links down in the description that I recommend you check out. And even if you're not interested in all the math and stuff behind it, it is worth reading, I think, at least just to appreciate the insane level of effort that goes into something like this. So that brings us to the next question. Why should physical modeling get you excited in all of your jiggly bits? 
If we consider something like a traditional piano sample library, we're going to get a very passable and often very realistic representation of what a piano sounds like, because sampling technology has come a really long way, and I think as long as it's a relatively major library released in the last decade or so, it's going to sound really good. And that is because sampling is just a very useful way to get a recreation of what a sound sounds like. But with that said, a sample library has its limitations. Let's consider something like UVI's Key Suite, which is an expansive collection of different instruments, all very deeply sampled. But the problem is, beyond doing some basic things like maybe controlling the brightness of an instrument with some basic filtering or allowing us to mix between different microphones to blend them together, we're still stuck with what a sample library is at its core, which is just a fixed set of sounds. The cool thing with physical modeling though is it's not defined by this and allows you to remove these restrictions and go far beyond what a sample library could ever offer. So let's talk about just piano tech and keep the example at a piano. Not only can we do the basics that you would expect in a sample library, like maybe changing the type of the piano, we can change every single aspect of this piano, like what the piano is made out of, where the microphones are placed in the room, how long the strings are, how much sympathetic resonance is there, or we could go beyond what is physically possible with a traditional piano by removing all sympathetic resonance or controlling the individual harmonics of a specific key and doing this on a per key basis. And while this could be theoretically possible in a sample library, it would be hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes, if not several terabytes of information, and you would need a wicked amount of RAM to run this. Whereas with physical modeling, it's just a set of instructions that your computer can follow in a couple megabytes of disk space. All of that is to say, to offer even a remotely similar level of control to piano tech, a sample library would just simply be unrealistic, not only for the storage, but just the practicality of recording that many different options and allowing the user to choose between them. While piano tech can't model everything and samples do certainly still have their place, I think over time piano tech is only going to offer more models and get more realistic and give you more options to choose from. And it's going to shrink that gap closer and closer and closer with every release to becoming not only indistinguishable from the real thing, but often better. Piano Tech 7 is really cool when it comes to pianos and the insane level of control it gives you even down to a per key basis on how that piano sounds, but it goes far beyond that by allowing you to even morph between the physical characteristics of multiple instruments and create something entirely new on the fly. So enough blabbing about all this, let's dive in and check out Piano Tech. Okay, so let's talk about getting a hold of Piano Tech because there are a couple different options. We have Piano Tech Stage, which is kind of the basic version of Piano Tech that comes with two instrument packs and comes in at $149. There's Piano Tech Standard, which has three instrument packs, that's $299. Piano Tech Pro gives you four instrument packs for $449. And the Piano Tech Pro Studio Bundle, which is what we'll be demoing here today, comes with all of the instrument packs and comes in at $899. Now, I know some people might instantly jump to say that sounds really expensive, but if we consider something like Native Instruments Contact, which I believe comes in at $400, and considering you would need several libraries to cover what Piano Tech can do, that's another couple hundred dollars. And if you want to run that in any decent amount of time, you're also going to need an SSD of a pretty decent size, so that's gonna set you back another couple hundred dollars. So with something like that, it's pretty easy to jump up above $1,000 pretty quickly. I think the only realistic competition I can think of for Piano Tech is maybe something like UVI Key Suite, which comes in at $349, gives you 94 instruments, and it runs in the free UVI player. So solid state drive notwithstanding, that's probably the only competition in the price point. With that being said though, as mentioned earlier, for the amount of insane control and depth to the modeling, I don't think Key Suite can really even touch what Piano Tech is capable of. So I think really even then comparing it to sample libraries is just apples and oranges because Piano Tech will very quickly surpass what a sample library could offer you. For the instrument packs that are available, there are several different piano models available. I personally don't know enough about pianos to really tell you the detailed differences between the things. I come from a guitar-based background, so I can tell you that similar to a guitar, a different piano just sounds and feels a little bit different, but I couldn't really tell you any of the gory details or historical information about these different models, but there's lots of different pianos available. There are also some historical pianos, which are really cool, which are precursors to the piano and early versions of the piano, which sound kind of interesting and fun. Harpsichord, which is 
a harpsichord harp, which is like a big concert harp that sounds really cool, electric piano, so that's your Rhodes and Wurlitzers, Honer Collection, Vibes, which is vibraphones, Celeste, which contains a couple interesting instruments, Xylo, which is xylophone and marimba, and then Steel Pans, which is steel pans, hand drums, and things like that. With that in mind, I think Piano Tech Standard is probably the best buy out of all of the versions because that gives you access to a couple of instruments that you can pick and choose. If you maybe just want one piano and then a couple of different instruments or you just want three different pianos, you can pick that up and I think it's a pretty good deal. Pro does offer some distinct advantages, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but I don't think that they are features that would probably be that useful for the average producer who just wants a piano plugin. Hey, what are, you, what are you looking at? Welcome to the fun corner. Faces over here, eyes over here, pal. So this is Piano Tech 7, and I've got the New York Steinway D Blues preset open. And Piano Tech actually has a MIDI file recorder built in, which is kind of cool. And you can actually export audio files as well. Uh, one thing I've actually really enjoyed is like when I can't sleep, sometimes I come in here and just improv and whatever. So it's cool to be able to instantly record that and save the MIDI file to bring into my DAW later, or even export the audio format version just so I have like a cool, loop to play around with. So I figured just so we can take a listen to several presets and get an idea of how the different keyboards and pianos and stuff sound, we would record just a quick improv. So I guess, uh, give, me, give me a key, any key. Uh, what, no, no, not, C is boring. Uh, what about, uh, what else you got? F, no, I don't, F is, no, I don't know how to do F. Uh, what else you got? Uh, what, what was that one? E flat, okay, uh, are we doing major, minor? Lyd okay, Lydian, fine, fine, you're, trying to get me. All right, let's uh challenge accepted. Let's do some E flat Lydian. Challenge accepted, now we've got something to work with. So let's give this a spin and dig through a couple of models and explore what Piano Tech has to offer. All right, so here we are with Piano Tech, and as you can probably tell by this here graphical user interface, if we open some things up, there are quite a few options to start controlling the sound of the piano. So let's give this little improv session a play and start playing with a couple parameters to hear what Piano Tech has to offer. So this is the same uh, New York Steinway D Blues. So let's give this a go. So maybe one of the first things we would try 
is something like maybe the hammer hardness. So let's crank the hammer hardness all the way up. And we're getting a very bright, poppy piano, but almost maybe starting to get into like tack piano territory. So let's take that down and try the inverse. And mind you, this is all real time. So I'm not even changing sample libraries or anything. Because this is all synthesis, it does this all instantly. Let's maybe play with the spectrum profile. So it says, uh, many piano manufacturers avoid having a strong seventh overtone. So let's maybe crank that and see what we get. Ooh. <laughs> probably why. So let's experiment with the spectrum a bit more. Just do something crazy. That's wild. So here... We're almost getting into like bell territory. Let's bring that back to the beginning. So that's hardly a piano anymore. Let's maybe add some noise. We could adjust the strike point, which is where the hammer is going to hit the string in the piano. If we bring it really close, We almost get like a weird toy. Um, we could adjust the string length, so a very short string length should give us a very... cheap, weird toy piano sound. All from this same, just one preset. We've essentially made a new instrument at this point. So that's pretty crazy. Let's uh, let's go back and let's move on to another preset here. Let's just hear a few. So this is another Steinway. This is the pop setting. And to me, I mean that that sounds incredible. Let's move on to a different model, a Steinway B. So maybe a bit brighter, maybe a bit more mid-rangey. Like I said, unfortunately I don't know all that much about different piano models, but Much like guitars, I can tell you which one I like. And one of my favorites is this Grotrian, uh, the Grotrian Intimate. I find myself using this a lot. I like how warm this one feels. So let's maybe design something a bit more useful. Uh, let's do kind of like a film score, ultra soft piano. So let's start off by softening the piano. And let's remove some of these higher overtones. Maybe put more focus on the first couple harmonics. the dynamic range slightly. Move that strike point. Let's make the strings even longer and give kind of a fuller, richer sound. Let's increase the impedance, which is going to make the sound decay a bit longer, so it's just going to play like a much bigger piano. We can also use this to control the overtones, so the higher the cutoff, the more presence of high overtones, so let's darken it. 
It's kind of subtle. Ah, there we go. That's pretty. It's almost like a harp. So let's bring that back. Let's add some resonance. So this means we're gonna get other strings or other notes vibrating. Um, this is gonna be probably more prevalent on the higher octave, so if we give this a play without the sustain pedal. Let's make that not worn out for right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if we play a really high note, you'll hear all those little extra notes vibrating. And if we increase the duplex scale, that's gonna add more range to how many notes are vibrating sympathetically. So that gets really, really gross. But if we brought this all the way down, we basically get a pure note. And on a real piano, that's like almost not even possible because there's bound to be some sympathetic resonance. So again, we're starting to stray into more unconventional territory of things that you couldn't do with a sample library. Another fun setting to play with, uh, blooming. So this simulates basically like if the piano was made out of metal is the best way I can describe it. So if we... We just go back to the, the stock feel here and let's add some blooming. It almost turns into like a sitar. So the inertia is how long it takes for those metallic overtones to come in. And if we make it instant, it almost sounds like vibrating a metal sheet, which is just wild. So beyond that, we can control a lot of other things like the action. So this controls the dampers and things like that. We could add noise from the key release. So if we do that, we'll get little mechanical noises, uh, sustain pedal noise. If we pump that pedal a couple times, we'll get noise of that vibrating the strings. Kind of subtle, let's just crank it all the way. So that's pretty ridiculous, but it does sound Correct. Um, if you've ever played a real piano and you do that, there is a very subtle amount of noise just from the mechanical bits moving. And some pianos have more, some pianos have less. And also, depending on the recording techniques, you can make it more or less prevalent, which we'll talk about that. Uh, why not now? One of the other things that are really quick, I think, is worth showing is the pedals. This is really, really cool. So back to our original idea of making like a soft cinematic piano. Let's do something maybe about like this. Let's increase the soft pedal. So let's bring in the soft pedal. Slow this down a bit. We get a very intimate sound. So let's add some noise. Maybe we'll speed that up a touch. Let's decrease the dynamics. And now let's change one of these pedals. So this is the harmonic pedal, but let's do maybe a pinch harmonic pedal. So now we're getting string harmonics, which is really pretty. It's like what you can do on a guitar. Now let's change that out for a celeste pedal, which is going to add some felt. So this is going to sound much more like modern film score pianos. Let's make these really soft too. Now we can add some basic effects. Let's do some quick EQ. Let's remove some mud. And then from here, we've got some basic effects. We've got uh, tremolo, wah, chorus, all these here. Um, the effects are pretty straightforward. 
I can't say any of them really blow my mind. They're just basic stock effects. The distortions are fun though. Uh, there's a really, really, really nice reverb though. So we've got the reverb down here, which has several presets. I believe this is all convolution because you can also use your own impulse. So we could load any wave file as an impulse response to run the piano through, which is super fun. So let's maybe grab the, uh, how about a cathedral? Let's hear that again. So yeah, we've got quite a few different settings and things to tweak, but let's talk about one of the more interesting ideas, which is the ability to change the recording setup. So if we pop in to the sound recording mode, we can switch between sound recording, which is how the piano would sound recorded with microphones, which as you can probably hear, pretty realistic to my ear. Let's switch to binaural, which is what you would hear if you were sitting in front of the piano playing it. And as I mentioned, especially on this binaural setting, if I was in front of a piano and piano tech was playing, I don't know that I'd be able to tell. Uh, then we've got stereophonic, which I believe just hard pans the sound in some way, where the lower keys are to one side, the higher keys are on another. And monophonic, which just makes it mono. <laughs> which is funny, because with that in a reduced dynamic range, it, it sounds like a cheap rompler. So that's kind of fun. But let's talk about this microphone stuff because this is absolutely crazy. Let's go back to the beginning. If we go to the microphone mode, we can actually change how the piano was being recorded and what mics it was recorded with, which is wild. So let's, uh, let's maybe switch to a different model. But you can see we've got this huge room and we can place the piano uh, where it is and we can position these mics wherever we want. So we can move these mics here and this is all 3D. Let's move this mic maybe up and rotate it. Let's take this room mic here and maybe drag it somewhere else. bring it closer to the hammers. We can also turn off level and delay compensation, which sounds much more natural. Some mics are going to be louder because they're closer, and there's going to be a slight change in time due to the distance. So that alone is incredibly powerful. And like I mentioned, in a sample library, I don't know that you can do that at all. That would just take so many samples that it would just be stupid. So let's go to an upright. I really like the sound of upright pianos. That's always been kind of my favorite, probably because I just grew up playing upright pianos. Um, where I live here in the Midwest, upright pianos are pretty common, like everyone has one in their house. So let's do an upright piano. And not only can we do the mic position and stuff, but we can also change where the wall is relative to the piano. So we can place a mic over here and you'll see uh, the sound is muffled. So it'll actually emulate the fact that you're recording a piano through a wall, which is crazy. But let's, uh, let's mic this up like I would mic an upright piano. So let's go back to the beginning. And I really like 414, so that's what I would choose. So I'm gonna do two cardios I'm 
gonna do a third cardio here. And I'm gonna place this one down by the bottom. Pretty close. Now we'll bring in these other two mics. Typically what I would do too is spread these out a bit. And then if I had the money, I would probably do a room mic in the back. So we'll do a 414 on Omni mode there. We'll turn off level compensation. Let's just hear just that room mic. Very, very quiet. There we go. Let's bring in the bass mic. Let's bring in the main stereo mics. And that to me sounds exactly like how I would record a piano in real life. If I record an upright piano, that's how I do it. And this is just wild that it can emulate that. So in terms of what Piano Tech Pro offers, just in case you're curious, is the ability to go in and edit a lot of this stuff on a per note basis. So the only reason I could personally see this being useful is like I mentioned, if you had a piano at home and you wanted to recreate that, this would kind of let you do it because you're so used to that specific piano that you might want to be able to take that out on tour with you or record with it if you don't have a recording setup. So what we could do is go in here and right click and go into note edit mode. And this gives us access to pretty much every single possible parameter you would want to control on a per note basis. You can also randomize it. You can freely draw it in. You can smooth it out. You can rescale, you can reset, you can do all of this to your heart's content. I personally would find this maybe a bit tedious, but again, useful for if I had a piano that I really loved and I had to get rid of it for whatever reason, or I was gonna go play a show or I wanted to go record at my friend's house and I can't bring my piano with me, obviously. So that's a pretty cool feature. It is a little advanced. And then Pro does also offer the ability for ultra high sample rates up to 192K, which may or may not be useful. Um, probably for the average, just writing songs and recording with it, probably not of much use, but that is something to know about. And the per note editing features do get really, really crazy, especially once we get into like the spectrum profile, we can go in and edit the spectrum of the individual notes and octave ranges, which is like mind blowingly deep and super fun, but incredibly weird. So with all that out of the way, let's hear a couple other instruments that aren't pianos. Let's maybe listen to a couple other piano models. So let's do the, uh, I believe this is the Yamaha. So yeah, that's very much like a pop or like modern contemporary music stuff. Let's try this one. That one really jumps out at you a bit. We've also got uh, the Tines here, so let's listen to a couple of these. And we get access to all these same parameters and a couple special parameters for all these different instruments. So maybe listen to a pianet. Pianet? <laughs> Wow. 
So here we also have line out, so if we were recording directly from the instrument and not recording it in a room. So we could add a room mic. And I believe that is emulating the blend of maybe the line out with an amplifier in the room, maybe. Let's try out a uh, clavinet. Oh yeah. Probably not the best file to test with, but... I love how you can hear all those little details, like those little mechanical parts. It's absolutely wild. Uh, let's move on to something else, though. Something totally different. A uh, vibraphone. How about a toy piano? Oh, gross. Maybe a kalimba? Let's add the range here, so we can go outside the range of what that instrument would traditionally offer, as indicated by these uh, yellow keys. We could do a steel drum. <laughs> Let's maybe do hand pans. Sick. Uh, let's do a harpsichord, I guess. Harp? someone here. I guess the pedal though it it damps on a harp. Let's change that to a pinch harmonic pedal. pretty sound. Uh, moving on, we've got some historical stuff here. I don't know all that much about these, so we'll just listen. And we'll do a Celesta. Celeste? back to a nice Grotrian because I, I love this one. And yeah, the fact that all of that fits into just a couple dozen megabytes of space, I think, is just absolutely wild. Now, all of that is super cool, and I think that alone is just really exciting, especially with how fantastic this thing sounds. But let's explore the morphing and layering options because this is what really has me excited about Pianotech 7 and was probably the feature that got me the most interested. 
So here we've got our piano, which is the Grotrian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But we can go into Morph and Layers. Now what this allows us to do is either layer things together, which I believe just crossfades, or we can morph things. And what morphing means is it takes the two physical models and allows you to blend them together to make something new. So let's go into morphing mode and uh, let's give this a play. So let's blend the Grotrian with a Steinway. Let's see what we got. So I have a bit of a hard time telling the difference between those. But then again, I'm not really trained in piano stuff. But I think we've got some of the brilliance of the Steinway combined with the, the warmth of the Grotrian. But let's do something weird. So let's blend the Grotrian with a marimba. So we've got a P P N M per perimbra, perimba, perimba. Yeah, let's blend it with a uh, harp. That's weird. So let's go back to marimba. And let's add another layer. Let's blend that with a yeah, with like the the Wurlitzer. So now we've got a blend between a piano, marimba, and a Wurlitzer. Let's move that up. Ooh, wow. That's beautiful. What about just the, the Wurlitzer and the marimba? It's very, very loud. And let's get super crazy. Let's add one more layer. And keep in mind as well, the edit will allow us to edit that specific instrument. So not only can we blend between different physical models, we can go in and edit every single part of that model, even up to a per key basis in Piano Tech Pro, and blend them together however we want, which is really just crazy. Ouch. So that gets really loud and really wild, but that is a lot of fun. And I think the other crazy thing as well is this is also uh, MIDI controllable, so we can assign this to stuff and we could create a new instrument by automating MIDI over time. So in the DAW, you could blend between different things over time or do whatever you want. And a lot of these parameters as well can be controlled with MIDI. So you get access to tons of different parameters that can be blended, interpolated, automated, and changed over time however you want, including the ability to morph between different instruments. Aside from the MIDI control, one other thing I think that is worth mentioning in the DAW is the ability to use multiple outputs. So there are five outputs from Piano Tech and there are up to five microphones. So if you wanted to configure this to where you wanted to mix each of these microphones differently in the DAW, like maybe you wanted a compressor on the room mic or you wanted to add a pitch shifter to the microphone in the in the back of the piano here or something like that you can totally do that so that's incredibly powerful and just makes this even more flexible um, some sample libraries offer that but again the real thing here is that you can change this as you see fit um, and you can even midi control the microphone positions and angles so i mean there's there's truly Nothing I can think of that can do this. And yeah, we've got the lid control. It's not fixed positions. We can open and move the lid as we see fit. 
and MIDI control it. So that's just wild. That is just wild. And it hurts my head to think about it. But I am so thankful that companies like Modart exist to push this technology forward and not only demonstrate what it's capable of, but push it into a territory that's interesting while remaining incredibly musical. So yeah, wooey, that's a, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. And I know this video was kind of long, but I hope it was thorough enough that maybe showed you some of the stuff Piano Tech has to offer and maybe got you interested in physical modeling synthesis and stuff like that, because it is really fascinating stuff. And I do definitely want to do a video in the future going over physical modeling in some more detail. So yeah, with all that said, Piano Tech is available right now. If you want to check it out for yourself or try out the trial, the trial is fully functional. It just has a couple of muted keys and I believe it times out after every 20 minutes or so, but otherwise it gives you the full functions to try out all of this stuff for yourself. And I think it is really worth downloading and getting this experience. It's truly, truly an incredible thing. So what do you think of Piano Tech? How do you think this compares to samples? What do you think Piano Tech brings to the table? I guess, what do you what do you think of this technology in general and how do you think it will impact the future of virtual instruments and the future of samples, I guess? It's a really incredible thing. And do you think Piano Tech sounds any good? Maybe you know way more about pianos than I do. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. So let me know all that stuff down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Big shout out to Modart for hooking me up with Piano Tech Pro. This is just wild. And I know that this is gonna be all over my music in the future. And I'm sure we'll be doing some more with it on the channel in the future as well. So I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. So thanks for hanging with me. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you guys again soon.